Hi there, Carson Hetty, author of Salesman on Fire. Today we're going to talk about how do you build and maintain customer loyalty. It's critical, especially in a day like today where uh, we are doing everything we can to maintain relevance and forge relationships, sometimes virtually. Um, customer loyalty, I look at it as an investment. Um, I've been very fortunate to work with many, many wonderful customers over a career in sales and sales leadership. And um, it's always been an investment and a nurturing of relationship. And I'll tell you, it's something that's continuous and requires consistency. Um, you're always going to be investing in the relationship. Uh, but there are some distinct ways uh, to, to do so. Uh, in an effective manner to build legitimate loyalty and um, a strong relationship. And part of that is adding value. Um, we talk about that a lot. What is that? What is value? Some of it's free value. Uh, some of it's interesting insights. Um, there's a lot of times where I'll reach out to a customer because I saw an article and just say, hey, I saw this, thought of you. What are your thoughts? Um, takes just a few seconds, uh, but it's an interesting way uh, to start a conversation, um, to show them that you listen uh, when you talk. Um, you know, it could be a, an article that comes out about a topic that came up in one of your discussions and to send that over and say, hey, I saw this and thought of our discussion. I uh, would love to know your feedback or how, how are you or your organization handling this? Uh, those types of things, it, it takes you literally seconds to do, uh, but it resonates with them because it shows that you're paying attention. Um, it can also start a conversation. Um, starting conversations in ways where we're not always reaching out trying to sell something um, is a really handy way of furthering a relationship because we all know nobody wants to be sold to. They purchase or they make a decision to change uh, based on the relationship, based on uh, minimized risk and believing that it's the right course of action and the right path to make. So adding value even when it's free. I also take very seriously my role is I'm an advocate. I'm the evangelist for that company, for that customer uh, within my organization. So what I mean by that is within your business, there are people that it, that it matters to uh, resonate the message of your customer's value add. Um, why should my leadership, other people in my organization that can help this customer, why should they care? It's my job to put th this customer on their radar, make sure that they understand, make sure that I am effectively articulating uh, why they matter. Uh, because there's ways that we can invest in that organization. There's resources, there's people, um, sometimes there's incentives. And it's critical that I am doing a good job as an advocate for that customer. Um, that is my one of my primary jobs, is to make sure that I'm advocating effectively for my customer within my organization uh, to ensure that they're privy to all the resources that they're entitled to or that they should be entitled to. Um, the other thing, too, negotiate transparently and in good faith. I've found very um, often that the, some of the best relationships and, and frankly, the best deals are when I'm able to say, hey, these are the things that my organization cares about, wants to invest more in. So if we construct this in a way that makes sense to my organization to bless, to, um, to provide incentives on, to invest, um, that's our job here. So my goal is to make sure that I am effectively advocating for you within my organization so that I can tell them the story. What are you trying to do? Um, also, you know, if you tell a customer, if you get a good enough relationship, um, it, this goes even smoother. But if you tell a customer, you know, what your company wants to invest in, um, what components of a deal will uh, aid them most in getting incentive or reinvestment or interest of your organization or of different people in your organization, um, these types of pulling back the curtain are really going to go a long way. Um, some of the best deals that I've done in my career have been because I laid all the cards on the table and, and negotiated in good faith. Sure, there's some, um, you know, you, you can't do this in every scenario, but if you have a strong relationship, um, I, I've had customers many times tell me, I want to know your deal cycles. I want to know, um, you know, because of our relationship, how I can 
help you, make you look good, and vice versa. Turn that around. I was reading something the other day that said um, to sell to people the way you'd want to be sold to, and we, we've heard that before, uh, but it's very true. Think about the way that you like to be sold to. Of course, you want customers to answer your questions, um, to show them uh, show you the plan so that you can show them a solution. And uh, I, I think that's why it's so critical to make sure that you show them, hey, this is our roadmap. This is where we're going. Uh, this is where we're investing. And I'd love to make sure that you are privy to the resources that you're entitled to. Um, nobody wants to just be sold to, to pay more, do this or that. But where the relationship can be furthered is if you legitimately come to the table with a way to invest more in them, or if you show legitimate interest in helping them, even when it doesn't benefit you. I've introduced customers to competitors before. I had a contact, a friend who worked at a competitor, and I realized my solution wasn't the one. So I introduced them to the competitor. I've had people tell me that uh, they've done business with me, paid more to do business with me because of responsiveness. Um, they knew that even if I had to get the answer somewhere else, that I would respond. And not only would I respond immediately, but I would respond um, periodically if it took me, let's say, three days to find an answer. I would message them daily uh, to make sure that they knew that I was getting the answer or make them part of the solution. If it makes sense in the situation, copy them on the response to whomever the other resources that you're getting the answer from. There's a lot of different ways to bring the customer along for the ride, make them feel like they're part of what's transpiring instead of just being sold to. Now, I'll tell you, you're going to be shopped. You know, people, customers are going to shop you. They're going to do what they think is right for their organization. You can't begrudge them that. I mean, that's what they're there for. I have definitely many, many times uh, been in conversations, negotiation, working toward a deal when I knew very well that that customer was talking to other organizations. But where we won was because uh, we had a strong relationship I was able to uh, very distinctly ensure that they knew that they were um, of interest to my organization for investment, um, but also made sure that they were privy to every single thing that they were uh, that was available or that was that they were entitled to. And I did everything I could to advocate for them. I was attentive, responsive, um, and invested in the relationship. Now, I've absolutely also lost deals uh, where I've had great relationships, and frankly. A lot of times, because of those relationships were good, I've had the customer call me after they signed with somebody else, and uh, they explained it. They explained why. And frankly, that meant a lot to me because um, it showed me that, look, they value the relationship, but they got to do what's right for their business. And I'm not always going to be uh, the perfect solution in every single scenario, but I've got a strong enough relationship that we had a good dialogue, and you better believe we did more business later. So you're going to take a risk. You're going to take a gamble. Your investment, you know, we invest in different, uh, you know, financial uh, uh, endeavors at times, and they don't always pay off. Um, but I would tell you, um, if there's anything that you can and should and what would want to invest in, it's customer relationships, even if they don't pan out the way you want them to, uh, especially when they don't pan out the way you want them to. There's some key learnings there. Continue to invest in customer relationships and make sure that you're doing everything you can uh, to ensure that they feel that you have their best interests at heart. Um, in sports, they call some of the lesser praised metrics the hustle stats, you know, the assists, the steals, some of the stuff that doesn't show up in the box score, chasing the ball, um, that, you know, whatever it's headed out of bounds and saving it. Um, it's the hustle stats with customers that go all the, that go the long way. Um, they are the ones that get the deals done. And I think sometimes that's what's lost when great deals happen. Um, is that there's a lot that goes into making those deals happen. And it's about serving. And it's about ensuring that the customer is along for the ride and understands every step uh, that you're taking along the way. If you can master the, hus the hustle stats of customer service, um, response, availability, uh, adding interesting insights and free value and legitimate care and concern, uh, you can earn their trust and loyalty. So my question to you today is, uh, what are you doing and what are your best tips for building customer loyalty? We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching. Happy selling.